Hello everybody, uh, welcome to uh, my next tutorial. I, um, I decided to cover highlights and shadows for this uh, particular tutorial um, and um, also how to um, make small adjustments to your avatar to make it a little more um, realistic. Um, and so um, I did have a few references on here to kind of go based off of. Um, unfortunately, you guys weren't able to see the before and after, or at least uh, the step from beginning to end um, in my most recent photos. And that's mostly because I um, am running through a lot of trial and error um, as I'm kind of um, learning new stuff myself. And so um, I did get a few questions on um, how to kind of create a more realistic look for your avatar. And uh, I figured this tutorial would probably be pretty beneficial for all of you um, to kind of add that extra ump to your pictures and so um, obviously I use green screen uh, for my photos um, I find it a little more helpful for me and kind of um, being exact on what colors I want to use or scene or that feel um, or story I'm trying to portray um, I've said that um, I don't always use backgrounds and I, I definitely have it more recently because it's um, not always the specific idea that I'm looking for. Um, and so I tend to kind of paint in my backgrounds because it's just easier. Um, obviously not the leading up to it, but <laughs> with removing all the green screen and, um, you know, figuring out the pose and et cetera, et cetera. But, um, you know, I do think that, um, you know, for me and, and, and my style, it, it's definitely um, my way to go. Um, maybe at some point I'll probably do a background a tutorial, but, um, for now, we'll stick to, to highlights and shadows. And so um, the first thing that I would say is uh, I'm looking at um, the raw that I use for my most previous photo. Um, and um, there's a lot of things that you'll see here that won't be quite obvious when I jump over to um, the actual photo itself. And that's that um, I've actually went ahead and, and blurred a lot of it um, on the raw, which is right here. Um, and when I say blur, what I mean is that a lot of times when I look at photos on Flickr, the one thing that kind of distracts me is the sharp edges of an avatar or um, if you are not running a, a pretty powerful computer or a decently powerful computer, you'll see a lot of those jagged edges on your avatar. Um, I have a fairly high-end computer and so my graphics tend to be you know be able to handle a lot of the cleaner edges but the one drawback to it is that it, it creates a lot of sharp edges and sharp edges is something that can be a little bit distracting for an audience when they're looking at your blog photos or um, you know if you're just trying to do like again a hobby photo um, just for funsies so um, one thing that I would always recommend is that um, make sure to kind of eliminate a lot of those sharp, sharp edges. You'll see it a lot with like like elbows and, and ears and shoulders and your neck um, and objects. You know, like this watch for me is a little bit too sharp. Um, this elbow, again, too sharp. Right here, way too sharp. It just looks flat. And so I'm using Black Dragon when I typically do my photos. And so um, it may seem like Black Dragon is kind of doing everything for me because I have a high-end computer, but it doesn't. It's It does as best as it can, and it's probably the best out there. Um, I know Firestorm has came out with a lot of upgrades and doing a lot better job with photos, but um, I typically don't feel strongly that Black Dragon does amazing in the photo um, category. Um, same thing with, with highlights. So um, with that said, um, just before I even get to the shadows is make sure you're, you're, you're fixing the sharp edges and how do you do that? So the way I typically do it is you could, there's two ways to do it. You can do it by a blur method. And so using blur, um, you can, um, I use an airbrush as my default, uh, but you can essentially um, just go down the outline and blur it all out. Um, that's helpful and um, a great way of doing it if you're just trying to cover a lot of ground. Um, and just take a step back. The reason why you want to eliminate the sharp edges is because when you're working on a photo, um, you've got to treat it like you're looking at a human being in real life. And the further you get from that person, the more blur you're going to get on the outline of their body. And so it's just like with any photo, distance creates more of a blur effect. And so when you're using that depth of field in Black Dragon, 
obviously a lot of you are probably using to the extent of just blurring the background and your avatar is the center of attention, but it's just not your avatar that could be the center of your attention. It's gotta be your face that's the center of attention. And so you wanna make sure that you're not distracting the audience by creating too much of a sharp image on your other body parts. But in addition to that, it creates some depth. And so for example, we have a foreground on my um, closest shoulder and we have the um, background over here with my further shoulder. And so I'm gonna blur that a little bit more. Um, and so keep that in mind is if your photo's looking a little bit flat, it's probably the highlights and shadows, but it's also you are having too many sharp edges. So blur it out. And as you're blurring it out, you'll start noticing that it looks a little bit different and it does, but you're creating depth. And that's what you're gonna be looking to do with your photos and your avatar. It basically will kind of unify you as the avatar with whatever background you're using. Um, and then obviously shadows and, and highlights will um, stack onto that. So um, one way of doing it again is you can use the blur tool and that obviously will help in blurring all this out. Um, the other thing you can do is you can use a smudge brush. Um, I personally enjoy using the smudge brush more. The reason why is because um, you have a little more control over the blur effect. And so the way to do it is um, you wanna grab your smudge tool um, I use an airbrush and so what you're going to want to do is you want to get up close into whatever you might be blurring out in this case I'm going to do my ears and you just shake it and so shaking it kind of blurs it out and I'm, I'm pretty heavy-handed right now to kind of exaggerate the effect of the blur but you can see that I'm doing it here same thing with jewelry you kind of just want to blur that out um, it's not something that is um, a focal point of your photo and obviously again you bloggers are going to want to show that as focal point when you're advertising it but um, again it's from a hobby purpose and just trying to create a better photo you're going to want to blur that stuff out same thing over here with your neck etc cetera, etc cetera. now this for me i probably want to get more of a rounder edge um, you can do that with blur because obviously smudge is just pushing this around um, I use liquify so if you want to use liquify that's really the way to go and i did do that uh, before i got into my photo where a liquify tool is essentially pushing the pixels to create more rounded edges and so i'll do a tutorial at some point but i kind of do it with my shoulders and even really the pose isn't really ideal it probably could have been a little bit better but liquify will definitely help um assist with those kind of flaws that naturally happen when you're using the SL avatar, you know, I don't know what to call it, the skeleton or whatever it might be. Um, so that being said, um, smudge tool, pick an airbrush, shake it. And the more you shake it, obviously, the more it blurs and that will really help in creating a depth to your photos. Again, look at your clothes like this over here. I feel like it's too sharp of an edge. And I probably would fix that again with liquify uh, by pushing this over uh, since it doesn't seem too natural, but I probably will liquefy this and push this over a little bit more and then create that shadow right here. Um, and so that again will be adding depth. But yeah, so when you're looking at your photos, take a look, find those sharp edges, blur them out. That's the first step. That's the first step to making it look more realistic and in unison with your overall photo. The things to avoid will be your face. I generally will not blur, not too much, just a little bit on the chin. Um, the jaw, um, and that's about it. Probably the hat, I'm gonna wanna blur that out a little bit. And this right here is the focal point. So I won't blur any of that out. Um, sometimes I won't even really use the blur tool. I'll just naturally blur it because I'm using highlight, just the way I'm kind of highlighting and, and doing shadows, it, it kind of blurs uh, it naturally. But if you just wanna play it safe, I would definitely um, you know, go ahead and use the blur tool or again, the smudge. My preference is a smudge, but if you're covering more ground, you want to use the blur tool. So that's how you basically want to refine your avatar. And that's generally um, one of the first things that I do once I've cut this out from the green screen and I moved it over to um, a plain background, which I flood filled as whatever colors might be, um, probably just an off black. And then you start working your photo. And so. Here's an idea on how it looks as a before and after. Now, I blurred a lot of this already on the raw, which is right here. 
Um, but obviously you can see over here before I did all the changes how pretty straight the edges are. Too straight, right? So you can you can obviously let me get a pin tool here, you can take a look. So all that right there, like way too sharp. Same thing with like the neck, too sharp. Right here, probably too sharp. Elbow, too sharp. So blur that stuff out. And when I go into uh, my photo here, I went ahead and did that um, over here with the car. Um, I hadn't done it yet here, but I probably will later on the photo. But there's definitely some sharp edges to be fixed and some that are already done. I definitely did it right here because this is more in the foreground. So this door, um, you know, I edged all this stuff out with blur um, and the smudge tool again to blur it out with the airbrush. Um, and then you can kind of see it before and after. So I kind of messed up here with the smudge. You can kind of see that I everything's off, off somehow, a lot of squiggling lines. It's obviously not supposed to be. Um, and end up fixing it to um, get a little bit straighter. Um, so let's take a look at the before and after. Obviously a vast difference. And I think that, again, part of the reason why you're seeing such a difference is um, we're eliminating a lot of those sharp lines, but obviously the highlights and shadows make a huge difference. And let's just look at it one more time. So taking all that out. And this is really the biggest, probably the most changes I did with the shadows and highlights, but it goes from a flat photo to a fairly in-depth photo. And so those kind of changes will definitely kind of make your photo a little more realistic um, when you start getting better at highlights and shadows. And so how do you how do you do that? So the way to do highlights and shadows is similar to how I did my blood tutorial, but essentially what you want to do is you you want to basically do the shadows by using the multiply um, and multiply what's great about multiply is that um, i generally will do it like at i would say um probably about like 30 percent capacity opacity um so opacity could be tweaked over here um and then i have my brush tool as a um multiply Um, sorry. So the brush tool will be multiply. And then in addition to that, you're going to want to create a layer um, that's also multiply. And this is going to be your shadows. And so how does that work? Um, so for this one, I, I basically knew that I wanted uh, my highlights to come predominantly from um, mostly this direction right here. Let me actually out of here so we know it's going to want to come from here i know that i'm going to have a little bit coming from this direction right here and there's two places and also this third place right here um, i knew that there was going to be a little bit of height from where these highlights were coming from or the light um, i knew i wanted to use turquoise because i did use a projector in world but i also wanted to add some yellows in it and so you'll see that the highlights will predominantly be coming from this direction and my shadows will then in turn um, kind of be in sync with where I think the light should be coming from. And so again, let's take a look at how that kind of plays out. And so there you go. And you can kind of see that I start highlighting this over here with the turquoise. I wanted more yellow in it. So I did a little bit spots of yellow. Um, <clears throat> And there you go. And obviously you can see that, you know, we we use a lot of those colors that I kind of wanted in the background to create that 
that unity between your avatar and the background. And so I obviously painted the background. You don't have to, it's not a big deal. Um, what I do love about painting my backgrounds is that the you can blur it so much, but still give the effect of, in this case, he's in a city. Um, and so it's a very simple strategic way of not putting in a lot of effort, um, portraying the scene you wanna do um, without having to try and find that specific background. So that's the way I personally do it. Um, but going back to how you do shadows. So again, I felt like there was some light coming over here. There was a turquoise light coming over here. So I did a little bit of that um, turquoise highlights here. And also I wanted to add more of the yellow. So I added more yellow here. And the thing you want to be careful with is knowing how close the light is to you. The further away, the less strong your highlights need to be. And so a lot of photos, I'll, I'll generally notice that they'll use the rim lighting and it's incredibly strong but it doesn't quite make sense because it seems like there's a lot of blur in the background, so there's quite a bit of distance. And so I didn't go too strong with it. Um, I just went a little bit on that rim lighting. And let me just take off my filter here. So I did a little bit of that highlight, not too much. And obviously you can see the blur effect kind of come to effect here, but just a little bit of highlights was enough. Here, I felt like it was a little bit closer to the light source. And so the highlight's a little bit stronger. Um, but obviously it's combating that shadows that's coming from this vicinity over here. So I painted that shadow. And the thing about the shadows is it doesn't matter what brush you use. Um, um, I use Dan Lovisi's brushes, but this is essentially a chalk brush. And so I build it up through the multiply. And so going back to what multiply does is multiply essentially is when you use multiply and you paint a color, the color becomes darker the more you paint over that same spot. So it's the same idea as kind of like my blood tutorial is you want to create a layer and let me just remove all these layers here. Okay. We'll set this over to multiply. We'll just name this shadows for right now. My brush which is going to be right over here. You can change the mode to multiply as well. And so what color do we want to pick? Honestly, the safest thing is just pick the color that you're going to be placing the shadow in by color picking it. So in this case, this shadow right here is fine. Don't go black. Like do not go black. It, there's no such thing as a pure black and a pure white. So I would generally just be right here in this vicinity. Beige is a fine color. But if you, you know, want to use an off color, like what do we have in this photo? We have oranges, we have yellows, we have turquoise. So we could technically get away with green. You know, that would be a perfectly fine color to highlight with. So we'll just put this here. Um, we can also use purples. Purples is a complementary color for this case. So why don't we just try purple for right now and see how it looks. So this is the natural shadow that's happening from Black Dragon, which is great. I mean, it looks good. It's fine. Um, so where do we want to do is you can, you can use an airbrush. I try to be very choosy about using an airbrush because a lot of times your avatar will be a little bit plasticky. So just be careful going too crazy with the airbrush. So, all right, lights coming from this side. Um, we want to create those highlights right over or the shadows right over here. So you can pick a midtone right here. Um, by the way, this is Coolerus. It's a really great program for color picking. Um, it's just designed a little bit differently where the layout is more, in my opinion, just easier to understand <clears throat> rather than the actual um, default tool that Photoshop gives you. Um, I think it's like either $14.99 US dollars or $10.99 or $9.99. Um, and the name of it is Coolerus, C-O-O-L-O-U-R-S. Um, uh, I find it's pretty easy to understand from beginning, um, you know, where the colors are, where the brighter colors, the darker colors, and just knowing what zone you want to stay in is a little bit easier for me um, as someone without classical experience to understand. So I would definitely recommend as an add-on, this should be your first add-on is getting Coolerus. So how does the highlights work or the shadows rather? So you're going to want to paint this in. So keep painting this in and 
like I said, I, I kind of feel like there's going to be shadows over here, so that's how I'm going to do it. Now, I'm using an airbrush. I Again, I don't always love using an airbrush. But sometimes it's the right time to do it. So part of the reason why I put my shadows here is that I do feel like there's going to be a little bit of bounce light coming right here. So I left that without too much shadows. And right now it's a little bit dark. I feel like it's a little bit too dark. So what I would probably do is I would go to the blur tool, which you can do under filters, go to Gaussian blur, and this will blend it in. There's other ways to do it, of course. You can do it by using the smudge brush, but this is a pretty quick and easy quick and dirty way of doing it. So where, where else would the shadows would be? Like definitely right here. We know there'd be a little bit of shadow here. We know we're probably just based off of that cloth. I probably would say, I'm gonna tone this down a little bit. I probably would do it more, more capacity. There we go. Probably gonna be a little bit of shadow here. And then also, you're going to want to add some more shadow here. So again, I decided that I really feel like the light is probably coming from this direction here. So let's create it under the chin. Um, I changed my brush to the chalk brush. And just blend that in. Probably darker under the chin, blend that in. All right, now we're working with something. It feels like there's a little more depth here. So we wanna keep on going. Um, same thing with the shirt, kind of the outline, you're gonna definitely get some shadow there. Same thing with jewelry, so the watch, the gloves, you wanna create those shadows. And so a lot of my photos, they're very subtle, but you'll see me just kind of just like add shadows in there. It's a little bit strong right now, I'm kind of just like sketching it out, but you kind of get the idea. Same thing over here. I, you know, there's gonna be a little bit of bounce light coming from a shirt here, but I would say there's probably gonna be some shadow here. Definitely over here. And then once you start doing your highlights, you know, you'll see a difference. Instead of turquoise, we can just go with this color, which won't be on multiply. We're gonna do that on screen. So screen is how you wanna do highlights. And I'll come back and show you how I use that right now, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna just pick a bright color here. I'm just gonna start highlighting that. Now we're starting to get some, some depth. So I'm obviously being pretty loose with my colors right now. And you know, you obviously see these strokes here, but I generally will work off of this method just to kind of get an idea on how I want it to look. And so you can see the highlights here, it's kind of faded in a little bit. So again, now we're, we're making progress now. Let's see a before and after. Bada bing, bada boom. So how do you do highlights and what was I doing there? So with highlights, it's the same idea. So I'll rename this as highlights. And so the idea with highlights is the same as with shadows. And so with shadows, we're just going back over here. Um, I'll generally color pick, so I don't know, we'll just do, I again, I really like to use the colors that I'm kind of 
in my surrounding area. Like I won't color pick this for the most part. I did for this example, but I probably would pick a turquoise. Um, I think I use purple for this one, but that's okay. We can use turquoise. Um, you want to be in this zone right here. And at that point, again, with multiply being on the mode of your brush, multiply being the mode of your layer, the more you brush over an area, the darker it's going to be. The highlights, it's a little bit different. So you're going to want to put the color right there. It's an off-white. Don't go, don't do pure white. Do an off-white. Um, part of the reason why you want to use pure black or pure white is that it's going to distract your photo and you want to make sure everything kind of comes together. Um, essentially what people will describe it as the values, like the values got to be um, correct. Um, another way of explaining it is that a lot of artists will do their photos in black and white. And so they will start adding the grays in the um, off whites and so that that grayish photo with showing the highlights and shadows sort of is what we call um, uh, basically trying to figure out the values and so once you figure out the values and everything looks pretty uniform with where the highlights are and where the shadows are you'll know that your photo is in a good place and then they start adding color to it they'll just start blocking it in with color now that they've already established the values and it's the same idea with um, screen is that you want to use an off-white and that off-white you'll be able to kind of highlight areas you want to highlight and so i'm going to use a very extreme uh, method of using this as, as you can kind of see like there's that little line right there it's a little bit off so let's go ahead and start highlighting that in again i like using a chalk brush you can use whatever brush you want but so let me get up close so you can kind of see how it gets brighter as you paint over an area So here's me kind of brushing over the same area. It's getting brighter, it's getting brighter. Obviously it's getting too bright now, right? Because we don't want to appear white. So don't get too crazy with the highlights. But as you can see, it gets brighter, 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 brighter. So we're here, watch. Brighter, 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 brighter. All right. So we'll erase that. All right, let's go back to highlighting this. So take it easy. Don't go too crazy with the highlights. That's obviously going to be a little bit brighter, so I'm just going to... Okay. So we're working with something there. Probably would say there's a, be a little bit of bounce light happening right there. So, like I said, you can see from a distance, I'm kind of just being very loose with it, but. <clears throat> You know, once I kind of like really get an idea on where I want those highlights to be, um, probably a little bit more over here, um, I'll go in and start refining it. And so um, what you'll notice with my photos, and I'll, I'll erase this, but I do add quite a bit of texture to the skin. Um, and I use a variety of different brushes, but I'll give you an example here is you can see that this is a chalk brush for this highlight. But more importantly, um, what I did here with this highlight was that I painted it in. Um, it was a mix of a chalk brush and um, probably an airbrush too. Um, don't be afraid to use like little lines like this to kind of like um, portray that specific highlight that's a little bit stronger than the others. Um, and then I went in with a pour brush to kind of like blend it in a little bit to make it seem like there's a transition from strong highlight, um, less of a highlight into the shadows. So the same thing right here, this, I feel like that there's a strong um, highlight that'll probably be happening here. And then it's kind of faded out a little bit. This one, if I had to do all over again, it probably would be a little bit less as strong. Um, it didn't need to be this strong in this case, but from a distance, it, it, it's fine. It's not a huge deal. Um, and so same thing over here. So we have a strong highlight, it kind of like fades a little bit. Same thing right here, more of a yellow. 
um, you can see that I did the shadows here. Same thing with the necklace as well. Um, which I have the other layer on, but you can see this is actually the final where I did add a little bit of shadow there. And it's the same thing over here. And so I would say that uh, the probably the hardest thing to figure out is how do you know where to put shadows at? And you just got to think of it as really, I, I would say probably looking at references is probably the best way of doing it. But just being observant of not only your photo, but I tend to be pretty observant and try to be more so since I've been doing more photos of like your, just your surroundings. And when you wear clothes, you see others wear clothes and where the shadows would happen. Take a look at a lot of photos and see how the shadows are kind of falling um, on that particular person or object. So like in this case, for example, like hats, for example, create shadows. And so there's going to be a little bit of shadow right here that I added on. Um, that's going to be something that's naturally going to happen. Um, you want to factor in the bounce light too, so some shadows won't be as strong. So I did add a little bit less shadow right here because I knew there'd be a little bit of bounce light. Um, and so is there a tried and true way to figure out where to put highlights and shadows? No, you've, you're never going to memorize it. And even professional artists don't memorize it. They use references as much as possible and they probably have a better eye um, than we do just because of practice, but it's essentially just really taking a look at your references, seeing how shadows are, and you'll naturally with practice see how um, it really develops in your photos as becoming better and better. You'll start figuring out way, places that really should have shadows and highlights versus not. And, um, you know, once you start adding that stuff in, you'll start noticing that there's definitely going to be a lot more depth into your photos. And so you can see again right here from going from flat to creating that illusion of depth. So here's another area of shadows. And so that's what kind of creates that realism is just knowing that you've got to add those shadows and highlights and, and, and putting them in the right spots. And that'll basically kind of give you that more realistic photo painting, or at least a more uniform um, photo. And so um, here's another example with Faye. Honestly, I could have posted this and it would have been wonderful, but this is the raw. Um, she obviously has a very, she's got an amazing avatar that, um, you know, obviously probably would have need a lot of editing. Um, but if you want to take a look at how I edited her photo, um, you know, here it is. And so again, the shadows is what really makes a difference on, I think this is Dappa's tattoo here, but it looks a lot more realistic than it did in the um, original. And I think the biggest reason um, is because of the shadows. And so just looking back at the shadows again, you can kind of see where I place them. And so again, I felt like there was probably some lighting coming from this side over here. Um, it's obviously facing her because there's, she, she's pretty lit up right now and there's gonna be light coming from the sides. So we obviously have these highlights here. Um, don't be afraid to add color. Um, I just decided on a purple and it kind of worked. Um, to add a little bit of shadow off that highlight. Um, but you can see here um, that with the hair, I added a little more shadow here to create more depth. I didn't completely take out that highlight there, but I did dim it down a little bit. Um, same thing with this side over here, her neck. Um, I did add a little bit over here to kind of exaggerate the shape. Um, and then over here too, and I think this part right actually is what a lot of people forget about is that where your armpit is at, there's going to be a little bit of shadow there. And so you want to make sure you're knocking that out too. Underneath the chin, the ears, just above the eyes. And don't forget to add a little bit of shadow here. That's going to be incredibly um, helpful in adding, uh, again, more depth to your face. And again, there's there's not sharp lines. Like I, I use, I mean, I painted them in. Um, that blurriness because I'm using a mix of a chalk brush and an airbrush to highlight, but you want to make sure that you're reducing those sharp lines and that will really again create that depth to your photo to make it all look more uniform. Um, so I hope this is helpful. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I did think I mentioned that uh, the brushes I typically use is the chalk brush, um, you know, a few, among a few others, but if you guys do want to get the brushes, it's Dan Lobisi's brushes. Um, you can find it on Google, or I think it's also on DeviantArt. It's only one set. Um, but otherwise, I hope this is helpful. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, I'll try and comment to um, whatever questions you might have. 
but hopefully this is kind of gives you a starting block on um, increasing your photos into um, you know something that's a little more special um, you know for you so thanks everyone for joining me I'm sure I'll do more if you guys have any suggestions on what you are looking to learn um, let me know and I'll definitely try to start streaming a little bit more so you can kind of see how I do my shadows um, I will say that I will fumble around quite a bit with shadows it's never easy um, it's still trial and error for me but I do think that um, you know, with practice, you'll find that your photos will just generally pop a lot more and have a lot more depth and feel a little more uniform once you kind of nail that down. Um, just lessening the sharpness of your edges and fixing that alone will be um, incredibly helpful. Um, so thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. If you have any suggestions for our next um, tutorial, I'm happy to do one. And um, thanks again. Bye.